Okay guys, I'm going to cover a uh, tutorial kind of on Tinkercad. It's going to be very basic. Uh, I'm still learning myself, so I don't have all the answers. There's a great community out there. I'm sure there's going to be lots of people in the comments that are going to bring up different subjects and different ideas and stuff like that. And I do appreciate it all. I'm just showing you some of the basics of what I've learned so far with uh, Tinkercad. I have a few friends and stuff like that that are starting into 3D printing and it's just a case where they have questions about actually doing some 3D modeling and stuff for themselves outside of just downloading files from say Thingiverse and printing them. So Tinkercad is online, it's powered by Google. It's uh, not a program you download. Just go to the website. So as you see here we're just going to go to Tinkercad.com when you go to sign up like I said it's through Google so it should be nice simple and easy integrated anyway this is my landing page and some of my designs and things I'm working on are already listed but this is where you start off with over here you have new and that's where we're gonna start and you have three options you have 3d design circuit and code blocks we're gonna go into 3d design so just gonna click on it and you're gonna see what's referred to as the work plane now we're gonna go over some very basics in this first part mainly how to move the camera around different angles and stuff like that one of the first things I do because I found out the hard way Tinkercad up here assigns you a name it could be funny it could be weird something different Either way, I definitely want to change that. Because that makes it a little bit easier uh, for me, especially if I'm going to 3D print on my printer screens to figure out exactly what file I have. But make whatever name you want it to be. Otherwise, you'll be stuck with random names that Tinkercad comes up with. Okay, so like I said, we have a work plane here. Mine is set up for millimeters. You can change your settings here, down here in the corner. So we have a grid pattern. And one of the first things I'm gonna show you is just zooming in and out. It's real simple. It's the mouse wheel. So we're just gonna zoom in and of course zoom out. over here on the right hand side you have basic shapes that you can use there are different categories you you can uh, select from over here so let's move around the camera and see what we can come up with I'm just gonna grab a simple block I'm gonna click on it bring it wherever I want it to be click again and it drops it in place if you click and hold down the right mouse button that gives you the ability to swing your camera around however you need it to be to help with your view you can even keep going underneath if you needed to that's just the right mouse button and moving your mouse around while you're holding that button down now if for any reason I get my camera out of whack which happens all the time like I said I'm learning say for instance I zoom in and now I'm trying to use my camera and I can't really get over to this side of the cube that I really want to see it's a little bit too close you have some options this is a cube of your work plane you have different options you can choose from we can take a look at the top if you click on it it gives me a top-down view I can come over to a side or this side whatever I need some of the easier functions is if I have an item selected let's get it out of whack here a little bit so maybe something like that 
So it's taken me a while to move my camera around to see exactly what I want it to. But right here, you have fit view to selected shape. So any shape that you have selected, any item, you can click on it and it will bring you right to that item. Now if at any point in time you say, well that's great, I can, I can look at this, but I can't see the overall picture. Gotcha. Right here you have home view. That's going to bring you right back to your work plane. There we go. You also can zoom with the plus and minus. And you can also change your perspective. So we can actually look at it, you know, flat, almost like 2D. Something like that, for example. So that's some of the basics with moving your camera around. And of course, it doesn't have to be simply front and top and left and right and all that type of thing. You can actually get into corners. Whatever you might need to change your camera angle. Now I'll also show you, since I'm here and I do have a little bit of time on this part of the video, this shape that I did, I have two options with this. I can keep it as a solid, a solid item, or I can make it into a hole. If I click a hole, you see it kind of grays out and it's an empty space. Now in the next video, we'll explore making holes in different things with different shapes. But for now, we're just going to leave it as a solid. So zooming back out, going back to our home view, you have different options here. Now keep in mind you have a 3D plane. So you have X axis, Y axis, and Z. Z being up and down. If you take a look, you have these options right here. It's telling you the size of this cube. So for instance, this one is 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters, and it's also 20 millimeters high. If at any point in time I want to change that, I can regular click and drag to make it as big or small as I want it to be. Or I can just click on the point and then I can type in how big I want it to be. And I can change it that way. Now of course you also have the rotate feature, which like I said is three dimensional. So keep in mind, there are different ways you can rotate this. And of course, if I wanted to, I can also bring this up my Z axis or down with this arrow right here. Keep in mind, this controls the thickness. It's this arrow that elevates it or lowers it. Anyway, next part's coming up. That gives you some basics on your camera, some basics on your sizing of your cube, however, whatever shape you need it to be.